What's up guys? Today I've got my hands on a powerful new mini PC. So this is the Geekom A8 mini Windows PC. Now it's currently priced from $683 and you can choose between the AMD Ryzen 7 or the Ryzen 9. I have the top spec version here, which is powered by the AMD Ryzen 9 8945HS, which is an octa-core clocked at 4 GHz base and up to 5.2 GHz turbo. For graphics, we have the integrated AMD Radon 780M. We've got 32 gigs of dual channel 5600 MHz DDR5 RAM, and the system takes 64 gigs max. For storage, we have a 2TB M.2 SSD, that's NVMe PCIe Gen 4, and that is already maxed out, 2TB is the maximum. Furthermore, you've got Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth version 5.2, and a 2.5 gigabit LAN. This comes pre-installed with Windows 11 Professional, supports quad display output up to 8K, and you have a built-in cooling fan. Now I'll quickly show you what you get inside the box. So we have user manual paperwork, We've got a VESA mount made from metal, so you can mount this mini PC to the back of your monitor, and it comes with a bag of screws. You're also getting an HDMI cable and a small compact 120 watt power supply. And last but not least, the mini PC itself. So mini PC has a complete metal housing. We've got the Geekom logo engraved on top. At the front, we've got two full size USB 3.2 ports, a headphone slash microphone combo jack, and a physical power button. On the side, we've got some vents. And on the back, we have a power socket, USB 4 port, HDMI 2.0, 2.5 gigabit ethernet port. We've got a USB 3, USB 2, and we have another USB-C port, and that is USB 3.2, and another HDMI 2.0. Now we've got quad display output. The two HDMI ports can display a maximum resolution of 4K, and the two Type-C ports can display out up to 8K, which is quite impressive. If we keep going, we've got a full-size SD card slot. That brings us back to the front, and here is a quick look at the bottom of the mini PC. Now this mini PC is upgradable, and we're gonna go ahead and check out the internals. To access the internals, you need to remove the four rubber feet, first of all. Okay, remove four screws. So we're gonna remove that cover very carefully because the Wi-Fi antenna is connected to that cover. Four more screws to open. Okay, so again, Wi-Fi antenna is at risk, so remove this little piece of tape here, which will then give you more slack and enable you to remove this metal plate. Here are the internals. Let's zoom in. So you can see the two sticks of RAM. They are crucial branded RAM. Um, we've got 16 gigs per slot. The maximum supported is 32 gigs per slot. So 64 gigs is the max you can upgrade that to. Here is our two terabyte SSD. That is already maxed out. Um, two terabytes is the maximum you can put in this system. And as you can see, there is no expansion for two and a half inch SATA or even a spare slot for another SSD. So you basically can only have one SSD drive installed and I've already got that maxed out to two terabytes. So that should serve me quite well. All right, so let's put this thing back together. So you can upgrade this in the future, uh, quite easy to access the internals. So first of all, I ran a boot up speed test and you can see on screen exactly how long it took to boot up this mini PC from a cold start. Now this mini PC is running the full version of Windows 11 Professional. You have access to the Microsoft App Store where you can download all your favorite apps and games and you have the usual default pre-installed Windows apps included. Now let's quickly check out the system properties. You can see Windows 11 Professional with the AMD Ryzen 9 8945HS with Radeon 780M graphics clocked at 4 gigahertz. We've got 32 gigs of RAM, 64-bit operating system, and if we look at the activation information, you can see it's activated and ready to use. System storage info, we have two terabytes of internal storage from which 1.8 terabytes are usable and from that we have 1.77 terabytes free to use. And the second drive you are seeing is my 64 gig flash drive, which contains all my 4K samples, which is exactly what we're gonna be testing next. So let's go ahead and play some 4K video samples from a USB drive and see how it performs. First video is high bitrate 4K jellyfish demo, 160 megabits per second, and you can see it's playing fine. 
Next up, we're testing the 180 megabit per second 4K Jellyfish demo. And again, you can see it's playing very well. And the real test, 400 megabits per second video sample is also playing super smooth with no issues at all. So no issues at all playing high bitrate 4K samples from a USB drive. I also tested 4K samples with different file and HDR formats and they all worked great straight out of the box using the default media player. So I did not even have to download any codecs to make this work. Now moving on to YouTube streaming, starting off with the usual Costa Rica clip and YouTube you can see does support 4K60 with HDR. So next up I tested Netflix from the web browser and you can see HD streaming supported with HDR. And just to show you my display settings, screen resolution is set to 4K. So um, no idea why we're not achieving 4K from Netflix, but it is what it is. Okay, so next game GTA 5, 1080p resolution, graphics set to very high, 120Hz refresh and we're achieving around 55 frames per second and you can see heavy GPU usage with TDP up to 54 watts. And the game is certainly playing nice and smooth with no issues at all. So trying something a bit more recent, a Plague Tale. This game is quite graphically intense. Resolution is again set to 1080p and I've set the graphics to its lowest. We are achieving just over 25 frames per second. So if I were to bump up the graphics, the game would be unplayable. So lowest graphics, 1080p, this is what you can expect. You can certainly improve frame rates if you were to drop down to 720p. Okay, so next game I'm testing is Anti Speed Boxing. Resolution is set to 1080p and graphics set to low. And you can see we are achieving close to 40 frames per second, although not very consistent, but still quite playable. And just to see what happens, I switched down the resolution to 720p and kept it on the lowest graphical settings. And you can see the frame rate peaks at around 52 frames per second, so slightly better performance at 720p. Okay, so now I'm playing a slightly newer title. This is Robocop at 1080p resolution and graphics set to high. So you can see the game plays pretty well at just over 28 frames per second. And you gotta love that background music. That takes you right back. Nostalgic. All right, so finishing off with some WWE 2K24. 1080p resolution, graphics set to medium, and we're achieving a pretty nice 60 frames per second. This is as bizarre as it gets. Stardust was talking to me about a cosmic journey he took, where he was a ruler of a new world. Okay, so that brings us to our benchmarks. Beginning with Geekbench, single core score of 2633, and multi-core score of 13230. And in the anti-2 benchmark test, we achieved 1.6 million. And finally, CPU benchmark score by Passmark, we have achieved 29,246. So let's see how this compares to the other mini PCs of this year. So here is my top performing mini PC chart for 2024, allowing you to compare the prices, specs and features. Now the rankings are based on Antutu benchmark results. So as you guys can see, the Geekom A8 has achieved position three on this chart with a benchmark score of 1.06 million. Furthermore, you can view all my latest charts online at chickstech.com and read them at your leisure and completely free of charge. So there you have it guys, that was the Geekom A8 mini PC. Now standout features for me, AMD Ryzen 9 supports 8K display out, you've got USB 4, 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, you've got an internal cooling fan and you've got lots of upgrade options. Performance is very good for everyday tasks, so it's great for general web browsing, office applications, coding, graphics and some light editing work. AAA games can be played, most older titles at 1080p high graphics to achieve 60 frames per second, or the latest titles can be played at 720p at lowest graphical settings. You could also use an external Type-C graphics card to boost your gaming power, and I can confirm the One X Player external GPU works great on this mini PC via the USB 4 port. Okay, so a few things to mention, a few caveats that we need to discuss. I expected the cooling to be a bit more efficient than it actually is. 
Um, so when you're playing AAA games for long periods, um, the, the unit does feel a bit hot to the touch. Now another caveat, there was only one single M.2 slot. Uh, a spare one would have been nice, or even a two and a half inch SATA expansion would have been great. Now the fan is also slightly on the louder side at 67 decibels, especially under heavy loads. And last but not least, the price is rather on the higher side. Um, this is quite normal with mini PCs. The space saving premium form factor um, is always more pricey than its larger counterpart. So that's all for this video. Any questions, do let me know in the comments. And if you want to see more of my latest and greatest unbiased tech reviews, hit the like button, sub to the channel, and hit the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.